All right, great. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm here to talk just briefly about uh, using Spark on top of the Cassandra database. And uh, I'm from Datastax, as you've heard that name a couple of times today. And we are advancing the slides automatically. We are the company behind Cassandra. So we have the world's experts, Cassandra, and are the big supporters of the open source Cassandra project. We have a lot in common. I think culturally and, and, and the way we are formed with Databricks, and that we have a strong open source uh, philosophy and uh, power a lot of open source projects. We have, uh, like Databricks, is powering the innovation and the community for Spark. We're the same for Cassandra. And back in May, we got together and compared notes and found that we were both hearing from the respective communities a real increase in user stories of wanting to or actually putting Spark in production on top of Cassandra, which was great. And we said, look, we're the, we're the two, uh, two technical companies behind these technologies. We should talk. And, and what we figured out pretty quickly was, while it was great that there was this huge interest in Spark on Cassandra, everybody was also having to do it themselves. There was a lot of uh, do-it-yourself trying to figure out how to integrate these two technologies, lots of different solutions coming around. And so we said, you know, look, we should make this easy for everybody. We should make it easy. And uh, so we committed at that time as part of our partnership, in addition to some uh, partnership on the commercial side, that we should provide to the open source communities an easy, uh, uh, robust way to connect these two technologies. So I want to give you an update on, on that. Uh, work and where we are with it, but before I do, I know not everybody is familiar with Cassandra since we're at a Spark conference, so let me just give you a quick update on Cassandra. In a nutshell, it's a massively scalable transactional database. Uh, it's a distributed architecture, so you can imagine a cluster of nodes. Uh, I can probably talk for hours it would take to explain uh, all the cool stuff about Cassandra, but in the, in the interest of time, I'll just give you some of the top level uh, features. Uh, because the architecture doesn't have the concept of a master. Every node in a Cassandra cluster is, this thing just keeps going on its own. Every uh, node is identical. Um, it makes it very simple, okay, very simple to use. Uh, it, there, that and some other architectural advantages lead to what a lot of folks like about Cassandra is it's always on. When I mean always on, I mean you can lose nodes, applications still run. You can lose a whole data center, applications still run. Um, the operational simplicity, not only from like an ops person, but also from a developer. We have a SQL-like language called Cassandra Query Language, which makes it really easy for new folks who are familiar with SQL to get up and running with Cassandra. Select star from where, uh, very familiar. And we provide a lot of free tools and drivers and open source components for Cassandra, so you can get up and running in just about any language. Um, over the last five years or so, as Cassandra has matured, it's really matured into a robust, easy-to-use platform that is taking on some of the biggest uh, database challenges in the world. And I thought I would uh, share a couple of those, of those with you just as an example. Um, so when I talk about massively scalable, our customer Netflix, if you're familiar with Netflix streaming for movies, um, Christos there, uh, one of the senior engineering leaders, was telling us uh, some details about their Cassandra implementation. And they use Cassandra with Datastax Enterprise. And they pump through a trillion transactions a day through that database. I think it's thousands of nodes over many data centers. Tr just trillion transactions. That's just, that just boggles even our mind. Um, the other thing he tells me is they added a new feature, profiles. If you're a streaming user, maybe at one point in time you got uh, recommendations from movies that one of your kids likes and because you're sharing a Netflix account at home and you're getting My Little Pony kind of movies recommendations and that's really not what you wanted. They heard their community and they wanted to add a profile feature. Well, it turns out that just adding that profile feature had a huge increase in actual database transaction load um, to support it. So in addition to having to have the application logic for that feature, they needed the database to support that increase. And one of the reasons they continue to love Cassandra is it's linearly scalable. Just add more nodes, get more performance. Because there's no master, there's no kind of um, asymptotic uh, limit that you reach, you can literally add more nodes, get more performance. And they were able to just solve that problem by adding more nodes. Um, when I think of always on, the always on architecture of Cassandra, I think of Outbrain as a customer, as a community user. 
They provide content recommendations to, I think, over 100,000 blogs and media properties online. And when Hurricane Sandy hit, one of a complete data center that they were using got uh, taken offline. And they continued to serve their customers because they were using Cassandra and everything just works. It's not a failover. It's just suddenly using the other half or, or however many data centers you have. When I think of uh, operational simplicity, I think of the Weather Channel. Uh, I think Robbie Strickland, I was talking to him Friday night preparing these slides, and he was telling me that while he definitely appreciates all the performance aspects of Cassandra, the ease of use for operations and developers was huge for them. Bringing new developers on, trying to run a distributed system with only a few operation folks, really important to him. And he also told me that they're huge Spark users. They are doing a lot. He is one of the uh, example customers who's trying to put this together themselves. They are using Spark on top of Cassandra to help analyze real-time weather data and uh, are real excited about what uh, Databricks and Datastacks are working on together so he can concentrate on his real problems and not trying to get these technologies to work together, which is, I think, what all of us want. So why do people want to run Spark on top of Cassandra? What's interesting about that? And um, to me, it kind of boils down to this concept of faster feedback loops. Uh, traditionally, and I think we've seen it already from some other talks today, you take data out of a transactional database like Cassandra and ETL it over to some sort of an analytic system, be a data warehouse or Hadoop. And over there, you would run some analytics. That's a very good use case for a lot of, use, for a lot of uses. If you have the end user of that analytics is a BI tool or a person doing some exploratory analytics, great. If you have multiple data coming in and you need to combine them, great use case. But increasingly, what we're seeing in the Cassandra world is folks who have these large Cassandra databases what their whole purpose for doing analytics was to feed it back to the application. It's not a business user who's looking at that analysis. They're feeding that intelligence that they've created through the analytics back into the app so it can feed it back to users. Maybe fraud detection, where you can't wait to turn off someone's connection because you've detected some fraud, and you have to compare that to a lot of historical data and patterns. Maybe it's content recommendation like uh, the Netflix use case. And so, as fast as Cassandra is on the one side and as fast as the analytics with Spark is on the other side, the ETL in the middle is just sucking the wind out of all of the speed. And so what we are hearing over and over is for this use case, which is, is really growing, ETL uh, is a three-letter acronym and a four-letter word. It, they don't want to do ETL. It just destroys the, uh, the whole value prop of all the investment in speed. What they want is to run that analytics right in place, right on top of the Cassandra database. And that's what we're talking about. That's why it's interesting to have Spark running right on top of Cassandra. So um, with that, I'll get back to the progress. I'm really pleased to announce that uh, the first version of this integration is available today. We just put it up on a public repo this morning. Uh, the engineering teams worked hard. We uh, developed this at Datastax with a lot of help and advice and review from the Databricks engineering team. And uh, it's free, Apache 2.0 license. You can get it right off the, uh, the Datastax public GitHub repo. Um, we'll watch the Cassandra, um, excuse me, the uh, Spark users list for questions on install, uh, suggestions, improvements, whatever. We'll watch that as a place to get feedback of how, how people are doing with it. But that was really because we wanted to get it out as soon as we could. We wanted to have it ready for the show. Um, that's not where we think it belongs. We really think it belongs in the Spark project itself. So we're offering it to you, to the Spark community. Um, we would like to see it get uh, absorbed into the Spark project. So all the governance of bug tracking and enhancements and commits and all that is just kind of blended in with the Spark community. And uh, it, when that happens, we'll shut down our public repo. And uh, that's where it will live. So that's what we hope happens. And we hope you guys find it interesting enough to do that. A few details on how it works. Really, the goal was for you not to have to know much about Cassandra. So it shows up, as you might expect, as a RDD, and you can uh, have an abstraction layer of rows of Cassandra database. Um, you can save data back into Cassandra. It's not just a read. You can push uh, information back, because that's really important to that feedback loop. And we built this on top of uh, the CQL language in Cassandra and our Java CQL driver, which already has all the robust implementation of error control and checking and, and efficiently multi-threaded to a Cassandra database. So we built it on top of that, and that gives us some other advantages. We can do things like push down where clauses to do filtering on the Cassandra side for you. 
Um, and we've done some optimizations around some technology in, in Cassandra called vNodes, which uh, if you know Cassandra, um, it allowed us by taking advantage of that to get another couple of uh, points of, of uh, performance. Here's a, a sample code. I hope this is boring. Uh, that was what it was intended to be was really boring code where you see very little Cassandra. It just looks like a Spark, uh, any other Spark job, right? You get a Spark context, you get read from a Cassandra table, and after that you just do whatever you could do with an RDD, push the results back. There are a lot more functions than this. When you pull down the driver, uh, you'll see there's a, a Java doc that it has a, a full list of all the methods uh, and some sample code and things like that. So please do feel free to check that out. So we did some performance testing on this. And uh, in order to do apples to apples testing, because typically the performance metrics you see for Spark are against uh, HDFS and Hadoop. And because this was on top of Cassandra, we wanted to compare it against something very similar. So in our enterprise distribution, Datastax Enterprise, we have an already highly specialized, optimized version of Hadoop that sits on top of Cassandra. No HDFS, uh, a lot of the components have been removed. We have something called Cassandra File System that uh, emulates HDFS and, but reads and writes directly from Cassandra. So we thought that would be a pretty good comparison uh, of the two. So we did a torture test where we made sure uh, the data was not in memory, it was not cached, and it had to go to different nodes to get the data. So this is not just crack open a flat file and do some map reduce on it and see what kind of performance you can get. This was actually going off of an operational database. And in that torture test, it was twice as fast as, like I said, already something we spent years optimizing already um, to run Hive queries and Pig queries on top of Cassandra data. So that was fantastic, just 2x right off the bat. A more a reasonable test where data was allowed to uh, be cached and, and, and was, was uh, in memory a little bit more, not completely, but still being selected from a Cassandra cluster, as much as 30x improvement. So we're, uh, we're, we're excited. We think the Cassandra community will be excited to get that kind of uh, analytics on top of Cassandra. So I mentioned a couple of times Datastax Enterprise. I'm not here to sell you Datastax Enterprise as an open source show, but I, I thought I would just uh, talk about it because there are some parts of this that are important to the community. Um, we provide services uh, as a lot of open source uh, commercial vendors do. We also have extensions and integrations and additional things to Cassandra that you don't get with open source Cassandra. I won't go through the litany of them, but important at the bottom of there is analytics. That's that uh, Hadoop, specialized Hadoop analytics that we've had for a while. Um, in our product. And so I'm also pleased today to say that we're releasing, as of today, a new version of Datastax Enterprise 4.5, which has this Spark integration out of the box for our commercial customers. So uh, that's available, uh, easy to use, everything's set up. Um, so why is that interesting to you guys? Well, I wanted to make it clear that this wasn't a one and done integration. We threw a bunch of code over the, the transom to the Spark community and said, here you go, have fun. This is central to what we do as a company. I have over 100 engineers and data stacks working on these problems, um, fueling those big problems. And we're gonna continue to support this because everything we do to uh, enhance, fix, maintain, evolve this integration goes right back to the open source piece that we've offered to you. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that um, there was gonna be a life to this. We uh, also are very proud that we're one of the first uh, certified Spark distribution, as was mentioned earlier by Jan. Um, we took that Datastax Enterprise and ran it through the, the certification scripts, and, our, our, and that solution is certified. So where do we go from here? Uh, as I mentioned before, we want to work on getting all this into the Spark project itself. So that's the first thing we're going to work on. Uh, we did this integration when we started at Spark.91 was the shipping Spark. And because we are very serious about quality and we have big customers doing a lot of things. We test all our products at 1,000 node clusters routinely with all operations pulling nodes in and out of the cluster, stress testing it. 1,000 node is where our customers want us to test. That takes a little while for us to absorb some of the newer releases and we had just written this, this uh, driver. So we're a little behind. We don't have quite 1.0 but we think that's okay because we've, we've, we're really confident in the quality and in the robustness of the solution. But one of our first roadmap items is we will bring this up to speed with uh, Spark 1.0. And we're gonna look at uh, the rest of the Spark ecosystem, how we can provide uh, easy support for things like Spark SQL and streaming and, and uh, all the other things you've heard about today. Most importantly, we will listen to both communities to figure out which ones of those we should do, which one's more important and what you guys want. So we will be watching that mailing list 
uh, as well as the Cassandra mailing list. There's some talk in the Cassandra community about what parts of Spark do we bring into the Cassandra distribution, perhaps making it easy for people who are pulling down Cassandra to have Spark integrated right out of the bat. Uh, not as far along conversations, but those are active, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we do there. And finally, a couple of takeaways. Um, if you want to learn more, we have some data stacks engineers giving a talk at one. Tupshin and Al will be giving a, a talk right after lunch. Uh, we have a booth here where we have some of the experts, the guys who tested this integration, uh, who know it inside and out. Uh, this is a quick talk, so we couldn't go into a lot of the technical details. But if you have uh, detailed questions, or how do I, what can you, those kind of things, hit them up. They're in the booth. Um, when you get back, uh, I, I, I say tonight, I'm old, I forget, everybody's got a laptop, you've already done it. Um, you can download the integration, there's the URL again in case you missed it. If you forget it, it's just github.com slash datastacks, you'll find all of our public repos, you'll find the one labeled Spark, you'll find it. Uh, if you want to know more about Cassandra uh, and are intrigued or, or want to know more, planetcassandra.org, great site. It's an open source site, has got training and videos and demos and sample code and downloads. Uh, everything you need to learn all about Cassandra. And then if you're interested in the enterprise version, you can, and you don't want to have to worry about putting too many pieces together, and you just want to click, click, next, and play with it, you can get the full enterprise version. You don't have to pay for it unless you put it in production. If you're just checking it out, trying to see what possibilities there are, and, or just want to play with it in an easy way, go ahead and download it. Uh, like I said, it's not uh, license keyed or, or crippled in any way. You can get the full thing. Finally, in the same hall, because uh, great minds think alike, I guess. We're going to have the Cassandra Summit in September right here in the same hotel. Uh, and I've seen the RFPs for papers. I know there's going to be several talks of Spark on Cassandra at the Cassandra Summit also. So you can get more uh, information and use cases from real users who want to tell you all about the cool things they're doing with uh, Spark on Cassandra at the Cassandra Summit. And it's free admission. Uh, so come check it out. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and hope everybody enjoys the rest of the show.